the schools, the safety, the jobs, it's all horrible. I mean, in some cases, they're less safe than places like Afghanistan. Can't get any worse. It really can't. The inner cities cannot get much worse. Perhaps they can, but not much. That was Donald Trump a couple of hours ago in Ohio in a meeting of pastors. And leading that meeting was Cleveland pastor Daryl Scott, a Trump supporter who is joining us now. Uh, thanks for popping over to, to be with us here, Pastor. I want to talk to you about the comments that we just heard Donald Trump make, that there are some areas in inner cities that are worse than Afghanistan. Has that been your experience in Cleveland? What is he talking about? Well, Cleveland, actually, not too far from where my church is, there's a city called East Cleveland. And it, is, it was listed at one time as the number two most depressed city in uh, the United States of America. In fact, a pregnant young African-American pregnant uh, uh, girl was just killed, or she was shot, I believe she was killed there last night or the night before uh, due to some gang activity. So it, it, it's, it's pretty hostile in these streets. And, you know, I was raised in the streets. I, I came up in the streets before I turned my life around, but there are areas that after a certain time of night, I don't want to go in. Or if I do go in, you know, I'm, I'm making sure I watch my back because there are a lot of areas in Cleveland, in the inner cities, where it's very, very dangerous. So, but Pastor, comments like that, rhetoric like that, the way that Donald Trump speaks about urban black communities, critics find that, some, stereotypical, that he is painting with a very broad brush when it comes to his outreach to members of the African-American community. Do you understand that criticism? Do you see that? No because, no, because if a black leader said the same thing, no one would be offended. The only offense is that Donald Trump is not black. And so a lot of people think that a 70-year-old white man shouldn't speak to issues like that. But if he's going to be president, he needs to speak to all the issues and just call, us, call it like it is and not try to sugarcoat it and not try to be so politically correct. If he was a black leader or if I stood up and said the same thing, no one would have a problem with it. Don King was with us today. If Don King had said the same thing, no one would have a problem with it. But they think Trump doesn't have a right to speak to African Americans issues, but if he's going to be president, he needs to speak to African-American issues because he's going to be president for all the people. So if he's speaking to African-American issues, what specifically is he proposing here, Pastor Scott, in order to help members of the African-American community? And I'm not talking about his sort of broad proposals on the economy. What specifically has he told you he would do for, for black community members across America? First of all, once again, he's not trying to be the president of black America. He's trying to be the president of all America. Black people uh, mistakenly thought Obama was going to be the president. But we're talking about his outreach to specific well, communities, right? Hold on a right? minute. Let me talk. Just, just wait a minute. Let me finish my train of thought. Everyone thought Obama was going to be the president of black America. And then they took offense because he was the, trying to be the president of all America. The proposals that Donald Trump has will affect all Americans, especially those that are disenfranchised of our ethnicities. If he's trying to, if we need jobs in the black community, he's creating jobs. If we need safe streets and he wants to keep the streets safe, if we need uh, economic stimulation, if we need better health care, he's going to address that and it's going to automatically help the black community. He wants to help the American community and the black community is in included in it. Right now, we're right. disenfranchised. A number of us are disenfranchised, so he wants to level the playing field, give everybody the same opportunities. Pastor Daryl Scott, thank you very much for being with us. We will see you uh, here in Ohio, I am sure, quite a bit over the next 48 days. We appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.